Hey, this is Larissa with Kintone Customer Success, and today we're going to review setting up process management in an app. So process management allows you to create a workflow or process for multiple users to take action on. So let's learn how to set up process management settings for a document request app. So in this app, anyone can submit an idea for a document. Once submitted, it will go to someone to either accept the request and continue to create it, reject the request, put the request on hold for later, or return to the submitter for more info on what's needed. So this workflow will eventually lead us to a complete or a rejected request. So first, always plan out your workflow ahead of time so you know the exact steps you'll need to add to the process management settings. So for each step, you're going to need to know status. This will indicate the current status of the record. Action, so this refers to the operation of changing the status of the record. So what will need to happen for the assignee to change the record to the next status? And then assigning. So this is the user who is allowed to take the actions. And one or more assignees can be set for each status. So let's get started creating those settings. So from your app, you're going to click the gear wheel, navigate to the app settings tab, and select process management under general settings. So here it already has um, a basic process set up. So what we're gonna do is we are going to delete that all out and we're gonna start fresh. All right. So just a little tip, it's best to give yourself a visual of what you need for your workflow. So this is gonna speed up your process setup and alleviate any possible confusion. So I've went ahead and created this visual to help me build out my process for the document request app. So let's take a look at this visual. So all of the actions are highlighted in green. All the statuses are in yellow. And then the assignee that needs to be set for that specific status is in blue. So we're first gonna start up here at this not started. And the person we want to take the initial action and start that process is gonna be whoever created the record. So that's why we have that. And then um, what the person has to click next, so the next possible actions that they could take after initiating this process is going to be just to request. So the first thing we want them to do is just submit the request. So once they click this action, it's going to be in the status request is in queue. And the person assigned to it is gonna be me, Larissa. So now if we're in this status request is in queue and it's assigned to me, so the options that I have next, so the action buttons that I could possibly click to pass it to a next status is in green. So I can either accept the request, reject the request, I can put the request on hold, or I can say I need more info and then it would be returned to the requester. So that's all I'll have to do is I'll set it up so I can click one of these four buttons the status after I click one of those four buttons is shown below in yellow. And then it'll also show who the new assignee is depending on what it's sent to. And then so on until we eventually hit the end where we are either showing as a request rejected or request complete. So that's why there's nothing else underneath those because that is the end of this process workflow. So now we'll go into our process management and set that up. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to enter your statuses. So if we take a look back at this, we made it super easy in this document because all of our statuses are in yellow. So now what we're gonna do is just type in those statuses in section two here. So we have not started, request is in queue. We could have it in progress. Rejected. On hold. Returned. And then lastly, it could be completed. All right, so now that we have included all the possible statuses that we could have for this workflow, we're going to start building out that process in Section 3, Process Flow Settings. So initially, like shown in the diagram, we're going to start with Not Started. 
and we're going to have this set to created by. And then we're going to come over here and it's kind of a little jump. So how I like to think about it is first think about what what's the first action that this person could take? Like what what's the action that they could take from not started to push it to the next status? So from our diagram, the next possible action that can be taken is to request. We just have one option for this one. So the action name, that's going to be the action button that will be clicked is just request. So they're just going to submit this action button. And then once they click this action button, what's the status that's coming after this action is taken? So if we go back and look at our diagram, once we click request, we're gonna go to the status request is in queue. And just note for later, it's gonna be assigned to me. So we'll come back here, we'll select our status after action taken. So that's going to be request is in queue. So since we don't have any more actions to add to this, what we're gonna do is we're going to start our next flow. So let's do request is in queue. So here you're gonna select the status. And I noted earlier that this is going to be assigned to me. So next what we're going to do is what are the actions that I could possibly take? once that request is in queue. So for this one, there's four possible actions that I can take, accept, reject, put on hold, or say I need more info. And then also just note the statuses that will be um, in effect once I click those action buttons. So how we add more than one action button is simply just click the plus here. So I have four options that I can take. So I have accept request, and if I do accept the request, the next status is in progress. I can reject the request. And the next status after that would be request rejected. I can put it on hold. And then it would be request on hold. Or lastly, I need more info in which case the status will be returned to requester for more info. So now that we have all of the next possible actions that I could take, we are going to create um, new process flows for if I was to select that specific action. So we'll create another row and let's just start with the top one. We're gonna start with in progress. So something's in progress according to our sheet. It's still gonna be assigned to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and type my name in there. And then the next possible option that I could choose after, a, after the status is in progress is I can either choose to reject the request or complete. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up those settings. So I can reject the request or I can Complete it. If I reject the request, the next status is going to be request rejected. And if I complete it, the next status is going to be request completed. So that was the end of that process flow because we are ending on either a rejected request or a complete. So we don't have to even do anything after you type these in because that's going to be the end of the workflow. So next we will create a new row and we'll just go down to reject request. So request rejected. And if we have the request rejected, oh, we don't even have to add any lines. So since request rejected, as I noted in the last one, that's the end of the workflow. So you don't have to actually create a new status for it because we're not having any actions come out of it. We're just gonna simply reject it. So let's go on to the next one. We'll do request on hold. So if the request is on hold, still noted that it's going to be assigned to me. And then the actions that I could take if the request is on hold is I can either reopen the request or I can reject the request. 
So let's start with reject request. Request rejected would be the status after, or I can reopen the request. And so for this one, if we're going to reopen the request, it's actually gonna go back to the status in progress. And then it's gonna flow with whatever the in progress next steps are. So super easy, just change reject, or just change for reopen request, you're just gonna assign it back to in progress. So the way that flows now is, if we're here in request is in queue and I select request on hold, it'll pop down here to request on hold, it's assigned to me and I can choose to reopen or reject. If I choose to reopen, it's gonna go back over here into in progress. And then I'll just continue taking the actions as stated for the in progress status. All right. So lastly, we have return to requester for more info. So we're gonna add one more row. So let's see. Return to requester for more info. And let's go back and take a look. Return to requester for more info. When it's that status, it's gonna be sent back to created by. So you can select a field that was on your form by clicking add a field for selection. So we're gonna choose created by. So whoever submitted the request, it's gonna send it back to them to add in more details that I needed to be able to complete this. So the possible actions for when it's returned to the requester for more info is to mark it as request details updated. And then once the request details are updated, it's gonna go back to request is in queue. So like I mentioned before, they click request details updated, it's gonna pop back up here to request is in queue, and then it's gonna let me select again. So do I wanna do more um, in progress? Do I wanna start it? Do I wanna put it on hold, reject it, or do I still need more info? In which case it would pop back down here and we'd go through that again, request details updated and hop back up here. All right. So it looks like we have all these settings up, set up to match what we need for this document request app. So once you have that all set, you're going to enable process management, click save, update the app. And now let's just test that out to make sure everything's working correctly. So we'll create a new record. We're just gonna call this test one. All right, so this is always going to assign to me because I did create the record and I also marked myself as the person who does all the tasks. So it might be a little bit different if somebody else requested it and created the record and then someone else is the one who's reviewing it all. So it's not started. So we are going to request this. And when we request it, it's going to push it to me. Now here I have these four options. I can accept, reject, put on hold, or say I need more info. This last one that says change assignee, that's only going to pop up for someone who has um, access to manage the app. So only people who can manage the app can change the assignee for um, the process management. So we don't have to take a look at this right now. Just wanted to let you know. So let's say, oh, I need more info. So it is gonna send it back to me because I was the person that created it, as you can see here. So let's go back. Okay, I updated the details that I needed. Now I'm gonna mark it as request details updated. And now it's request is in queue again. So I have those four options. Let's accept the request. Now it's in progress. And then if we just wanna hop back here and look, in progress, the next actions that we have are either reject requests or complete. So we are gonna be at the end of our workflow. So let's just say we are going to complete the request. So now the request is completed. As you noted in the settings, we didn't add a new line to set up um, if the status was in request completed. And that's why there's no action button here because we didn't, we didn't ask it to um, allow a next step or a next action to be taken. So now the request is completed and this is the end of the process workflow. 
So that's how you set up process management settings. Um, thanks for watching.